So today is Halloween and because I like multiple choice, choose your own adventure, you guys at home get to, you know, let me know what you think. I'm gonna let you guess what I am today. Am I A, a Japanese person, B, a Moroccan princess, Am I C from the Brady Bunch? Or D, did I not have a costume at all? Went to my mom's house and begged her for something random I could put on that kind of looked like a costume and ended up with this. Well, hey there, you beautiful young people. This is Magic vs. Logic sex, love, and relationship advice for Generation Y with a little bit of a twist. How it works is I read out a question and then I answer it from two perspectives. One from the head and one from the heart. And then in the comment section below, you guys are gonna thumbs up magic or logic depending on which advice you think the questioner should follow. This week's question comes from Kathy and she writes, I am finished college and still a virgin. The older I get, the harder it gets to tell people I've never had sex. And now with Snapchat, Tinder, and other social media sites that all my friends are on that seem to revolve around sex, I'm feeling like more of an outsider than ever. How do I tell people about my decision to wait without being judged or excluded? One of the things I noticed right off the bat in celibacy is I had more clarity. I had more self-worth, I had more peace of mind, and I was just a lot more relaxed and sure of myself. The average North American will lose their virginity around 16 or 17 years old. So if you are 20 or something, mid-20s or so, it's understandable that you might be feeling left out or left behind in some cases. I can relate to this. No, I'm, I'm not a virgin, I, I wrote a book on sex, but what I am is I don't drink. And when I first started going out with my friends to clubs and they were like hammering them back, I kind of had to nurse this water and just hope people thought it was like vodka all night long. And so I really just came into my own and decided that this decision was for me. I became very confident in how I said that. Because if you're saying it all like, oh, well, I guess I'm sort of, I'm like, they might call me a virgin, but I guess, well, should I go? You want me to just leave? And there really is nothing to be ashamed of. The stats are truly on your side. There's a really great study done in the Family Journal of Psychology that found that couples that waited to go down the aisle before they got into the bedroom ended up having a 15% higher overall satisfaction with their sex life and were 20% more likely to be happy with their relationship in general. Like that relationship. So as you can see, not having sex longer actually equates to better sex down the line. Kind of like short-term pain for long-term gain or one of those other, can't have your cake and eat it too. Wine gets better with age. There's actually a trend happening in Hollywood right now called retro celibacy, in which a lot of your fave celebs have been or are currently still celibate because they found it gave them more clarity, more peace of mind, and more focus on their craft. Celebrities like Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga, Lenny Kravitz, Prince, Jessica White, Megan Good, of course, have all gone through this process. So there's a plethora of different reasons why people choose not to have sex, but what's most important is why you choose. So here is the logic. If you want other people to understand and respect your choice, you have to truly understand why you're doing it yourself and feel very confident in telling that to other people. There's a really great article in The Atlantic, it's an editorial, about abstinence-only education and how it helped to shape this one writer's life. So read it and find some encouragement in her confidence. <laughs> A library is a place where you can lose your innocence without losing your virginity. If you go into Google right now and type in celibacy and then put a space in front, the first suggestion that comes up is involuntary. Like it or not, if you are an older virgin, there are a lot of negative stigmas and stereotypes, hashtag 40 year old virgin, that come along with that. But you can really debunk these myths, or is it defunct? Either one. You can get rid of these myths by not being that stereotypical, awkward, uncomfortable virgin. Just because you're not having sex doesn't mean you should opt out of being a sexual being altogether. By the time we're about 12 years old, for some people younger, our bodies, our hormones, our mentality begins to switch where sex becomes very intriguing to us. Now you should follow that intrigue in a way that's safe and respectful to your morals. It doesn't mean you have to ignore the fact that you are a sexual being altogether. There are a lot of great ways to be sexual without having sex. Any expert will tell you the safest, best, and for some people most surefire way of exploring your sexuality is with yourself. Not only will you get you know, all hands on deck and a great learning experience, it's also a great experience in terms of how to be good in bed for whenever you do decide to be with somebody down the line. It's the best teacher. And I have to assume that if you're waiting to have sex, it's because it's actually important to you, that it means something, that when it does happen, you wanna be prepared and you want it to be special. So with that being said, you should have no problem on reading about it, researching it, immersing yourself in it, 
You need to be freakier than the freaks. You have to know how many nerve endings a clitoris has. What's more sensitive, the base or the top of the penis? What's the female prostate? Where is it? What does it do? Does it really even exist? Familiarize yourself on all the topics, anatomy, mental, emotional, social aspects of sexuality. That way, not only one, will you not feel uncomfortable the topic comes up because you can chime in, but two, you and yourself will feel a lot more sexually fulfilled. For further reading, I found the perfect book. It is so on point with great reviews, but the title's super long, so I'm gonna read it. It is called Sensual Celibacy, The Sexy Guide to Using Abstinence for Recharging Your Spirit, Discovering Your Passions, Achieving Greater Intimacy in Your Next Relationship by Donna Marie Williams. So now it's up to you guys to decide. How do you honor your decision to be a virgin in a hypersexual world without being judged? Logic? You stand firm and confidently on your decision. No excuses, no explanations necessary except for one. It is my damn decision and I'm proud of it. Magic. If you don't want to be pegged as an awkward virgin, then don't be awkward. Don't let your virginity be the defining factor of your sexuality. Make the two very separate in terms of what you do and what you know. On last week's episode, we asked, at what point does online admiration of somebody who you're not in a relationship with become detrimental to your real life relationship? Now, magic won out last week and there was a lot of great comments and here are some of my favorites. This week's email comes from a dude. I know I shouldn't be dancing, that's kind of sexist, but women just love giving relationship advice to guys. I'm gonna take your entire left breast, shove it in my mouth, and deep throat your nipple. 